Watch this. Whoa! Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Here you go, girl. Oh my God, she came out far on that one. That is definitely the way you want to start your morning. Come on, whoa, come on, girl. It's amazing feeding snakes, but I want to tell you how I really feel about feeding reptiles. Lucy, this is the time of year where she either goes onto food or she goes off of food. Lucy, you want to try to eat, girl? Lucy, come on. Come on, come on, girl. You want to try to eat? Well, that's what happens this time of year with Lucy. Oftentimes she goes off of food. Sometimes it's two or three months. And I am absolutely fascinated with this part of the process. I love reading animals and seeing how they're going to eat. Unfortunately, you know, my big girl, when she goes off of food, I'm always a little bit bummed because I love her eating. But I'm going to give it one more shot. Oh, look at that. She took it. And that's what I'm talking about. It's just so strange. You know, snakes are weird. You don't want to give up on them. Initially, I was like, I don't think it. But I could tell it one second. Her head movement just, wait a second. She turned on it. Now she's thinking about feeding that she's gonna eat it. a couple rabbit snakes. It's just so interesting when it comes to snakes. I've been fascinated by it since I was a little kid. You think about this. I mean, a snake like this is eating a giant rabbit like this, and it doesn't have arms, it doesn't have legs, it doesn't have anything to help. It's just absolutely a wonder of nature. Oh my God, did dad give you anemones and a fishy thing? Hi, blue buddy. Oh, look at the cutie with the purple tail. Oh, he's so cute. My turn. Sorry, Mr. Brian. Kicking you out. Take it. There it is. As Mrs. Brian was saying, which we all agree with right here, you know? Ooh. Angry. Ow! Ow! I hit my funny bone. <laughs> it's not funny. You want your rat? Yeah, there it is. None of us really enjoy feeding rodents and rabbits and pigs and stuff. I grew up on a farm, kind of. The chickens and the turkeys and all that stuff. So I don't like feeding off the animals because it makes your soul feel bad a little bit. But at the same time, I love feeding. Okay. Well, what I mean by that is one, not that I. Marshmallow. You gotta let me open. You gotta let me open the door, dude. When you're taking care of as many animals as we do here at the Reptarium, and even at your own house, you know, you wanna make sure that the environment's right for the animals. You wanna make sure everybody's happy and healthy. And the best way to do that is when a reptile eats, it means that they're well taken care of. Me and Connie are here 40 hours a week doing nothing but cleaning, making sure all the animals, like I said, are happy and healthy and- Come on. <laughs> That one made me jump a little bit. You know, I'm not used to doing this all the time. 40 hours a week doing it. <laughs> yeah. But feeding is one of the most exciting times of the week. And I absolutely love cleaning up snake poop. They get big, they get fat. Job security. Just keep pooping when they eat. I mean, look at me. In order for you to understand how I feel about feeding animals off to other animals, I'm gonna try to feed Gemma here. Now, she's been eating pigs, but I don't know if she's gonna take a rabbit or not. Since we've had her, again, she was off food for 15 months. She definitely fired up to eat pigs again. She seems interested, but I don't know. It's interesting because snakes will actually feed certain things better than others. She's got some interest, but she's not really firing up like I'd like her to. So she might be a pig eater and not a rabbit eater. Come on, girl. Oh, another kind of thing where I just don't think she's going to eat a rabbit. She has a little bit of interest, but she's not got enough of interest to where she's actually going to snap at it. Come on, girl. Want to try to eat a rabbit? There she is. She's starting to open her mouth. She has interest. She's almost there. She's opening her mouth right there. There, there she is. Oh, sh come on. There she is. I'm learning her as well, right? For 15 months, she didn't eat, so I have to learn how she wants to eat. She definitely loves the smell of pigs and she strikes them and coils at it. But with a rabbit, she's different. And I was able to actually finally get her to take it like that. That's pretty amazing. It's so weird how every snake is like that. But to go back to what I was saying about how I feel about feeding animals to other animals, I'm gonna have to take you back to when I was 15 years old. The first time I ever fed a snake here was actually sunrise. <laughs> it's exciting. So Sunrise was feeding on little rats, and now she's eating pigs and rabbits. I mean, come on, Pinocchio here. Look, he's eating. Woo! He's eating little, little fuzzy mice right now. But another year or two, maybe three years, I don't know how long these guys take to grow. He's gonna be eating big, large to jumbo rats, depending on the size. So these, they get six, seven. I'm a little late, but I'm here. How are you? <laughs> wow! Did he get your finger? No. Oh, well, you jump back like I thought he did. Maybe that one wasn't so exciting. This is another example of you get to learn your animals. Tiger Lily is one of those snakes that you gotta sit there and kinda take a look with the rat. You know, you gotta tease her. Not gonna mention any names like Bugatti. Not gonna mention any names like Bugatti. He just typically strikes right as you open the cage. They all have their own personality. You try to steal my burger or something, I might bite you. Try to yeah. steal somebody healthy's burger, they'd be like, oh, thank you for not letting me eat this. This is obviously Cupcake, the boa constrictor, and hopefully she's gonna wanna eat for us today. You have to actually get her like this for a little bit, or really interested. Oh, there she took it. And actually, the second snake I ever 
ever bought was a boa constrictor. I had a Burmese python, a boa constrictor, and then I had a ball python. Everything I had at that point had been feeding on frozen thought, but the boa constrictor, the baby boa constrictor, which name was King, would only take live food. And there was something that I didn't really want to do, but I wanted my snake to eat. Getting your snakes to eat, that's the pinnacle, right? You know, when they're eating, you're feeling like, all right, they're healthy, they're good. Look at how amazing cupcake looks right now. So reluctantly, I bought a live mouse from the pet shop that I was working at. I went home, I threw that live mouse in, and immediately King grabbed the mouse, coiled it up, and I just saw that mouse suffer. And it was so devastating to me. I mean, I love all animals. And to see that mouse struggle while King was constricting it was absolutely devastating to me, to the point where, honestly, I considered at that very moment of getting rid of all of my snakes and never keeping reptiles again. So yeah. although I love feeding snakes, I've never loved the fact that we have to feed other animals to reptiles. Tell you what, El Toro the bull snake is always a trip when you feed it, because once it smells food, it comes flying out. El Toro! Come here! I'm like a ratador over here. Buddy! Whoa! Jeez! I didn't even see it coming! That's what I'm talking about. And that's one of the reasons why I feed Frozen Thought to as much as I possibly can. And really everything at the Reptarium. I don't like to see live feeding. I really don't like it. And don't get me wrong. I understand that frozen rodents were once alive. They're humanely euthanized. And it's just a little bit easier for me. Again, it's kind of like eating hamburger or eating a steak. You don't really realize that it comes from a cow. I mean, I understand what the process is. But the fact is, is that Frozen Thought is a little bit easier for me to stomach. I always say that if there was a time that I didn't feel bad about feeding off animals, that maybe it'd be something that I should get out of the business. I just want to get Night Fairy to follow me here. Come on, follow over here. Over here. He's getting a little bit crazy about this. He used to be dialed in on this blue ball. Now he's been a little bit weird, but I'll go ahead and give him food anyways and just start that training and continue to do it. I think you should have some empathy when you're feeding off things. If you actually get enjoyment out of it, maybe you shouldn't keep reptiles or keep animals at all, really. Listen, we're supposed to be animal lovers, not just reptile lovers. And listen, feeding snakes in particular is one of the coolest things, right? Because it not only gives you the sense of accomplishment that your animal is doing well, when they eat like this, you know that they're healthy, they're happy, their environment is really good. But it's it's also exciting, right? You know, it's one of the more exciting things you can do. I love handling reptiles, that's super cool. Seeing other people handle them is even cooler. But you know, feeding them, that's like an exciting thing and you can only do it about once a week. So it's kind of the crescendo of the whole week's work. First off, how are you still sitting in the same spot? We went and got ice cream, we found a key. Whoop, bop, bop. <gasps> Pretty awesome, right? Yes! Okay, that's all we wanted to show you. Welcome to National Raptarium Day. Wild Zuko, looking through the trees. Now, why are you looking at the water, dum-dum? Oh, oh, there you go, oh, oh. Yeah. Spirit it. December 17th will be my second year anniversary. So you've been putting up with me for almost two years now. On top of that, that means I've fed animals over a hundred times here at the zoo. You know, you think about a 52, ooh, a weird lucky strike, but it works. Every week we feed, right? 52 years, two, nine, seven, 52 weeks in a year, almost two years. That's a hundred and, 104 weeks. And almost every single time that we feed our snakes and other animals here, they always eat. And that just goes to show that that's how much time and like love that me and Connie put into. Oh, oh. You can have that now. We put in to this place, you know? Every single day that we're here, we're cleaning, we're feeding. Temperatures are good. Humidity's good. Lights and everything. I mean, every single one of these enclosures has multiple lights, whether it's UV lights, the heat lights. We love this place so much. And then I want to say thank you to all you guys because everything that we post, you guys comment like, but thank you. Aww. Mike? Thanks, Connie. And like I mentioned, I love all animals. I mean, think about it. Brillo is a mammal. He's not that much different than a rat or a mouse or something like that. I mean, he's certainly a lot cuter and stuff like that. I mean, look at how amazing. But if I didn't love Brillo and I didn't love all animals, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. As a matter of fact, I used to breed rodents years ago. I don't breed rodents anymore. And the reason I don't breed rodents is because I would fall in love with them. It was funny. At one point, I think I had like seven racks full of rats and mice. And three of those racks were literally like keepers were like my pets. And what happened was I'd have a litter of rats, let's say, and there'd be this like really cute gray hooded one or black hooded one or maybe a little dumpy eared one. And I'd be like, oh my God, this is so cute. I can't beat this one up. And I would literally set it aside in the keeper rat. And so I literally had hundreds of pet rats and mice. I just loved them to death. As a matter of fact, I bred these one mice. They were called rhino mice. They were like hairless. They had like lots of skin. And I bred them for like two years, probably through 300, 400 of them over that period of time. And I never fed one of them up. I literally kept every single one. At one point I had hundreds of these rhino mice that were so absolutely adorable. I said to myself, I can't breed rodents because I'm too much of an animal lover and I don't want to feed any of them off. So now I just feed frozen thawed and occasionally we buy live rodents, but with little cute faces like guys like Brillo here. How could you not love that animal? Oh, Mike, what are you doing? I was going to feed Black. 
He's not a snake, though. Oh, yeah. Huh. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know why he thinks rats are so high up in the tree, but he always goes up for food, and it's kind of scary. Over here. Oh, he's going to make me do it. Bugatti, it's not up there. It's rats, not bats. Hey, down here. Shoo, shoo. Woo! Food response. No tickle needed. Kobe. Gerald, you want a rat? Good, you, good, you, good. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that in there. He'll come back and get it later. Look at the most venomous cobra we have here at the zoo displaying because he thinks he's all big and bad. Just, just eat your mouth, Steve. Or small rat, whatever that is. That's another one. He's gonna be seven, eight, nine feet. I used to have a pet rat when I was a kid growing up. Her name was Ethel. We have an extra rat. I think somebody's, uh, Still hungry? Because rats are definitely her favorite, man. Like, no matter how big she gets, she loves rats. Boom! Oh my goodness. Oh, oh my god. Ratty, dude. Don't go over the branch. That's the door. Boom! Oh, here she goes, here she goes, here she goes. Look how big Beer Day is getting. She is definitely crushing right now. Oh! My love of anacondas started right here. It's been a great day. And now I hope you guys understand what I feel about feeding reptiles. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, 